So how, we're seeing more children going into hospital, more young children going into hospital, mm -hmm. um, how serious can flu become? Uh, are we just sort of vaccined out? Uh, are we just wanting to move on? What, what's happening? I think it's a... What's the situation for them? So, uh, so under six months, we'll take the six months first, aren't they? We know that. Um, Proud but, but, but they have, <laughs> yeah. But they have... Talk about the nasal vaccine thing, because I, I, I wonder whether spraying it up the nose is more difficult. I don't know. Is it? I, what, than an I, I injection? For little kids, the idea no. of holding a child where something goes up their nose, no. is that Do you know not... What? Do you know what? Most... There's a thought for us. <laughs> Helen, thank you. Thank you. We are on BBC One until a quarter past nine this morning. Then it's time for Morning Live with Sam. At a quarter past nine. <laughs> um, it's 8.30 exactly. That means it's time to get the news, the travel and the weather where you are this morning. We're See back in a bit. Second. Hello, this is Breakfast with John Kay and Sally Nugent. Just after half past eight. Now, it was the hugely successful lockdown sitcom which saw two bickering actors creating their own personal drama out of an international crisis. Well, now it's back for a third series. Staged follows lead characters David Tennant and Michael Sheen as they navigate away from the pandemic with a return to something of a normal life. Let's take a look. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Delighted to say David joins us now. He's on BritBox. Do you want that thing that everybody does where I'm confusing the real person with the actor? I know. And then you throw a bit of Doctor Who into the yeah, mix. Exactly. It's completely Gone. baffling. Yeah. Doctor Who's pretty baffling at the best of times. Uh, the time is 8.43. Oh, did you watch the game last night? I, of course I did. And uh, not such a great first half. Really good second, second half, half was from really England. really encouraging for England, yeah. But heartbreak for Wales this morning. to have a little technical problem with Jane's sound there. Maybe all that volume yesterday of the cheering say, has ruined our microphones. That, and that's possibly one of our, lo our loudest lives that we've had in the last couple of days. Those kids, the noise has been incredible from them. Yeah. The singing. You know, I think one person might be responsible for any microphone breakage, and that was Preston. Yes. Nine-year-old Preston, who's a member of the class there. Uh, year five, I think he is, at the primary school in Swansea. You might remember him, yesterday morning's programme. He was whipping up the rest of his classmates into a frenzy yeah. and the Wales team with a motivational message. He was so much fun that Jane watched the game with him last night. Oh. Oh, we've lost Jane's sound again. We can't hear them. What a shame. We thought we had it back and fixed. Um, but it's great to hear just that bit when he said pride. Pride. Sad and also, pride. I love the fact that they gave their team a round of applause. Yeah. Being there for Wales has been such an incredible achievement. And I think on reflection, I know it's hard this morning, mm. but I think on reflection, lots of fans will feel that immense sense of pride that their team made it to that tournament and did themselves and their country proud. The teachers, we heard from them earlier, yeah. and they were telling Jane that for them, they think that this has been a really important learning lesson for the kids. That yeah. yes, it's about winning, but it's also about just learning and sticking together. It's about country and pride and family and, and togetherness. And I think we've seen that, if not heard that, uh, in the last couple of minutes. Now, it's just coming up to nine o'clock and an environmental charity is calling for more volunteers to help test pollution levels in rivers. Yeah, Earthwatch says the number of community groups monitoring local waterways has doubled in the last year, but more so-called citizen scientists are still needed, as our environment correspondent Helen Briggs reports. <laughs> 